Well, we've had to move away from Chitwa Dam, sadly. We just couldn't communicate with anyone from Final Control. I'm not sure what's going on today, but we've got some zebbies, as you can see, grazing. I think it's two stallions. This one that's closest to us seems to be the, the younger one of the, of the two. But I have to tell you, Byron, that's actually a really funny story about the broomsticks. I did the same thing when I was doing my trails guide qualification, my backup trails, for the first two weeks. Uh, when we were walking and accumulating hours and learning about everything, we too had to carry broomsticks. I think I can even pull out a photo of all of us posing with our broomsticks. It's actually quite funny. So it, it's a good thing. I think it was the best thing that ever happened to us is learning to walk in the bush without relying on a piece of equipment like a rifle. It makes you then not want to do silly things. And I think most of us would prefer to walk without a rifle anyway rather than have to carry one of those things. You know, malfunctions happen all the time. You'd rather rely on your brain and your training than something like a rifle, in my opinion. That is, of course, I can still hear the hornbills calling in the distance too. Not that the zebra seem to mind. I don't know if they really enjoy the beautiful songs that are played for them every single day. Isn't that nice? He's a beautiful looking stallion though. He's a lovely boy. He's quite sort of strong, big thick neck, big shoulders. And of course, a very powerful hindquarters. Now, toxigenic, you say gorgeous. They are, they have to have some of the most striking patterns out here in Africa. And now they're actually starting to blend in. Look at that, see, and, and because these are the, the virtual zebras, so they've got the shadow stripe, which you can see very nicely there. It creates that sort of dirty appearance to the zebras. I mean, they also like to roll in dust, so that does, doesn't help uh, the sort of black and white colors to stand out. But it is that shadow stripe that gives them that sort of filthy appearance. But I think it works in their benefit at this time of the year because it actually helps them blend in a little bit more. That white is not too obvious. See that? It's like the same color of the grass. I'm just trying to figure out if this is a stallion or if it is a mare that is perhaps with him. I can't figure it out just yet. We'll have to wait until the, the other one turns, but I wouldn't want to get into a fight with this fella. Now, until we figure out if it is two stallions or if it is a mare and a stallion, I wonder where the rest of the herd is or if it is just a bachelor group. I think, no, I, mm, I'm trying to think. I mean, look at this one. It looks a little bit stallion-like, but just like a youngster. Like it's been chased out now, but we'll we'll be able to identify it in a moment. It's very very difficult to try and uh, tell the sex of a of a zebra. There's not many telltale signs. It does help though if you know horses quite well. But I think that it is a young stallion. Look at that neck. See that neck is quite sort of thick. The hindquarters are big. It's just lacking muscle in the shoulders. But you know you've got to grow into your body of course but we'll see in a moment and I haven't haven't seen any mammary glands just yet come on oh I can hear the hippos at Chitwa amazing how the sound travels now we're on cheetah cut line too we must be about a kilometre and a half away from Chitwa Dam as the crow flies so that's very impressive that I can hear uh, the sounds of those hippos in the very, very far distance. Now, they're just going to keep grazing around here. The grazing seems to be quite good. There's often a herd of zebra running around here. Oh, there's some more zebra coming too. I'm just starting to see some more stripes appearing um, from the distance. You might be able to see just through the thicket. You see that stallion has responded. So he's looking across the way at that zebra, which I cannot tell you if it's a male or a female from here, but it's coming this way. Putting its head back down again and continuing to eat. So I was chatting to Ari, one of the Nkoro guides. I passed him earlier and I asked him if there was any updates in the east or west, and he said, sadly, no. They haven't found the lions yet, and they didn't get to see Mvula either last night. So he gave everybody the slip. Maybe he even just sat down in that long grass and it would be impossible for us, of course, to have seen him. The grass is still quite long in that area. Look at that lovely tail. That's actually one of the nicest looking zebra tails that I've seen. It looks like he's actually brushed it. 
He obviously hasn't. But it seems to be in good nick, a nice length. Great for swatting flies and bees and wasps. Sinatra, you say that the zebra is super photogenic. They are indeed. And now he's using the luxury facilities. That was quick. I wonder where he's going now. He's going around the corner to towards that other zebra. Let's see what happens. They're both disappearing around the corner now. I'd love to know what's going through their minds, though. I wish I could get inside the animals' heads and understand what they were thinking about and how they were planning their days. Do they have some sort of a routine or is it completely random? They definitely have a drinking routine, though. They will go down and drink at least once. But other than that, you know, what do they? Do? how do you decide where you're going to go and eat? All these things. I want to know all these answers, but it's unfortunately, it's impossible to know these answers because we can't have conversations with these animals. Yeah, the hardy dars also, crested barbets, a couple of turtle doves here and there. It's lovely. All right, let me move forward because I want to try and get a view of this other zebra. And I also want to know if we're looking at a bachelor herd over here, if we're looking at a small breeding herd. That one looks quite big. But then we have seen a couple of mares that look like they're in full. Oh, this is a stallion, yeah. You're a young boy though, you've got a lot of growing to do. You're a bit nervous. There they are again. I think this is a little bachelor herd that we've actually got. That one looks quite big. But then we have seen a couple of mares that look like they're in full. Oh, this is a stallion, yeah. You're a young boy though, you've got a lot of... It wasn't nice. Let me just, I just want to reverse and find a gap to look through to see what they're staring at now. What did you boys see? Very jumpy. But it's good to have a quick response race there. It's good to have a quick response race. Why I can't have a response rate? I don't know why I keep wanting to say the word race today. Perhaps uh, racing stripes is on my mind. No, they're standing very quietly and both ears are pricked in the direction that they sort of spooked from. They're using all their senses now. They're using their eyesight, their hearing, and their sense of smell to make sure that there isn't a lion laying in the long grass trying to stalk up to them. That's not to say that there isn't. It's particularly dense around here. No, they don't seem to be too worried at all. They're relaxed. Hmm. Now, Michael, you're wondering at what age would a young stall stallion challenge an older stallion to take over his harem? Um, well, it, I suppose it depends. It's, it's like this sort of whole situation with elephant bulls. It depends on um, if there are big, fit, strong males in the area, because sometimes you can see stallions mating at quite a young age. I would say when they get to about five years old, maybe even slightly older than that, I reckon that they would be fit and strong enough to be able to start challenging males uh, that already have a, a role within a harem. And it's a serious fight, though. My goodness, if you've ever, anyone's ever seen zebras fighting, they rear up just like horses, chop with their front feet, kick with their back legs, and then, of course, those very sharp teeth, which we were looking at uh, in the tent of that zebra skull. And they'll bite each other. And they, they must be some of the savage, sa most savage fighters out here. And uh, one thing that they do do, if you've ever seen, like I said, zebras fighting, you'll notice that they always end up going fighting down on their knees, and then they also spin around and always look like they're trying to bite each other's tails. But it's not the tails that they're going after. 
They're going after to the, the nether regions. So it's it's, um, it's quite a savage thing. I think uh, if they can, they will try and take their competitor out so that they can no longer compete ever again. So basically they try to kill each other. And off they go. So yes, don't get into a fight with the zebra. Actually, don't get into a fight with any of these animals because you will definitely come off second best, especially if you're just armed with your, your hands. I think you'd have a tough time challenging all of these animals. Anyways, they're moving now in that direction where they got a bit of a fright. So there's obviously no threat there. Zebras have got very good eyesight as well, so I trust them. When they alarm, normally something's around. I walk in the rain, you're wondering how are zebra's teeth different to domestic horses? I don't actually think that they are. I think it's a very, very similar setup. Uh, I've never, uh, unfortunately, never had a look at a, a domesticated horse skull. I've seen my horse's teeth, of course, when I was putting the bridle on and when the dentist came. Because at one point I wanted to be a, a equine dentist too. I actually did some uh, shadowing. I did two weeks of shadowing of our local horse dentist. And it was really quite exciting. And I'm just trying to think. I was very young though and I wasn't really paying attention like I pay attention now. But I don't remember ever seeing anything else too different. So we were looking at that zebra skull and there were six molars on top and bottom jaw on either side. And then there's quite a gap. And then of course you get to the where the muzzle is. And the front sets of teeth is again. There's six teeth on top and on the bottom. And I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same with horses. I do stand under correction, though, but I'd never noticed any sort of difference, like I said, when I was putting the bit, putting the bridle on my horse and making him open his mouth. Oh, right. Well, let's move on. Let's go and see what else we can find. Like I said, I want to try and figure out where Tingana's gone, because if he wasn't in Biffle's Hook yesterday, he does this all the time. 